So thank you very much for coming to this last session of Thursday. I'm surprised that so many of you are still here. I will try to be short, not do overtime, because I kind of realize that I am the only obstacle between you and beer, so not a comfortable situation. So let's do some housekeeping. Please silence cell phones and let me introduce myself. My name is Dan Sarka. I come from Slovenia, so you probably already heard that I'm not a native speaker. But before you start making jokes, try to say and pronounce correctly my hometown, which is called Ljubljana. So the one that succeeds this can make jokes with me, okay? Fair enough. So I'm dealing with uh, data and computing for nearly 30 years. And lately I realized that basically I was all of this time kind of data scientist, which is a new buzzword, because I'm dealing with statistics and programming for all of my life. And uh, I read lately, it was Harvard Business Review, uh, saying that data scientist is the sexiest job of 21st century. I kind of disagree with this because I remember when I was younger, you know, it didn't really work this way. If I approached to a girl, you know, hey, baby, I know statistics. <laughs> you know, the common answer was, well, go take a walk, you freak. <laughs> Nothing didn't work. But anyway, this is new buzzword. So yes, I am kind of data scientist. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is the most advanced analytics you can get in Excel. And I'm focusing in Excel 2013 because at this moment you still need to make some decisions. There are some trade-offs between taking on-prem or the cloud version of Excel. And some add-ins are still not enabled in the cloud version and some add-ins are not brought to 2013 version yet. And this is a huge list of all of these add-ins. I'm not going to cover all of them in details. I'm going to focus on those that are not commonly introduced. So I'm going to focus on data mining add-ins, also make show demos with MDS add-in and fuzzy lookup, things that are commonly not presented. I'm pretty sure all of you already visited a lot of sessions with details about Power BI, Power Pivot, Power View, Power Map, and so on. Uh, I, I just want to have everything in one place, to have a complete list, and also to explain where are these differences between on-prem and cloud version. And at the end, I will also show you how you can combine data mining with Power Pivot, Power BI, and also try to explain why would you do this. So let me start with built-in analytics. Don't forget that we have already inside Excel enough of mathematical formulas, statistical functions, and we can also enable analysis tool pack in which helps us analyzing data even faster. And of course, with Excel services in SharePoint, you can also enable collaboration through server work workbooks and have more or smarter portals. Of course, Excel has limited capabilities. It becomes very slow with huge amounts of data and with a lot of formulas, so we can easily get to a problems that uh, it takes you forever just to open the worksheet or save it. Next thing, also don't forget that Excel is first and most important rich client for SQL Server Analysis Services, reach all up client, tabular or multidimensional mode. So we, as an all up client, it supports nearly all of the properties that are available, especially in analysis services multidimensional. Uh, tabular is not so rich in these properties. Uh, and besides using pivot tables and pivot charts, which are kind of closed controls, very, very easy to use. However, uh, kind of limited, you cannot do additional uh, statistical computations on this pivot table data. However, you can access cube data with cube functions directly from Excel. And this way you can combine even analysis services data 
with all of possibilities you got inside Excel. And up to here, there is no difference between on-prem or cloud version. Power Pivot, this is probably the most important part of this Power BI suite. Introduced with uh, SQL Server 2008 release 2 as Excel 2010 add-in. Already built-in in Excel 2013, you just need to enable it and also fully support it in Excel 365. So what is Power Pivot? I know that you've been to many sessions, so let me just make a brief recapitulation. Power Pivot is kind of single user in memory analysis services, tabular mode. Excel becomes analytical server with Power Pivot. And comparing to basic pivot tables you create on Excel data, you get incredible performance and you can handle, because of also very, very good compression, you can handle really, really large data sets. You are limited only with your memory, but you can, over the thumb, count on 10 times compression. So if you got like 64 gigs memory, you can handle up to 60 gigabytes of data sets without big problems with Excel 64. Also, uh, Microsoft invented in 2012 this new acronym BISM, Business Intelligence Semantic Model, to describe a single conceptual OLAP model that covers both tabular and multidimensional mode. Multidimensional mode supports multidimensional expressions language, tabular supports data analysis expression language. Physically, you can store data in analysis services or have analysis services uh, only as a middle tier just to support metadata. In multidimensional mode, you have also this intermediate model, roll-up model, uh, whole-up model, hybrid roll-up, when you store uh, metadata and aggregates in analysis services and keep source data in your relational database management system or in your, your data warehouse. So uh, analysis services tabular mode has three different implementations. So like single user mode, personal business intelligence, this is Power Pivot. Power Pivot for SharePoint is team business intelligence, so you can share this Excel uh, Power Pivot models through SharePoint sites. And analysis services tabular is more like for organizational level, business intelligence, organizational level, all observer. And multidimensional comes into game for more complex problems. Again, we are at this listing, introducing Power View. So Power View was created by reporting services team. It appeared first in SharePoint 2010, if you installed reporting services in SharePoint integrated mode, you got Power View. And in Excel 2013 and Excel 365, it is already there, built in the product, so you just enable this add-in and you got this nice, simple, very powerful reporting tool. And as you might have seen during the keynote today, it has also a great, a great future. So the idea of Power View is to have really powerful reporting tool, yet very, very simple to use. So it's simple for end users. You don't need any knowledge about query language, and you need only a couple of clicks to begin visualizing data. Also, it's pretty flexible, so very, very, very nice tool. It is integrated with analysis services tabular, so it basically creates DAX queries. And then uh, lately you can also use it for analysis services multidimensional, but you need to implement service spec 2, I think, for analysis services 2012, so you are not changing power, you are actually changing analysis services to accept DAX queries and translate them to main MDX queries. Uh, and by the way, uh, Excel pivot table, Excel as analysis services client is actually creating MDX queries. And you can also query power pivot and tabular models because analysis services tabular accepts MDX queries and translates them to DAX queries. This is how this thing work. 
pretty complex, but they work. Okay. Now, Power Map is ex add-in for Excel, which is, let's say, a little bit more powerful in spatial and time data visualization than Power View itself. Uh, however, the features of Power View are really, be, there are more features so you can create more, more advanced reports with Power View, just a couple of better visualizations with Power Map. And here is already the first trade-off you have to make. Uh, Power Map is fully supported and fully integrated in Excel 365. For Excel 2013, you can still download only the preview version. So Microsoft's promise is uh, cloud first, not cloud only. So apparently at some point, we might expect Power Map also for 2013. But this is first place where you have difference between 2013 and 365. Power QA is something that exists only in 365, not even as a preview in 2013. So this is kind of English or natural language query. You know, this is uh, an expression that is very natural for Americans, but not so natural for me. So what Slovenian language is not natural. You know, when you say natural language, you mean English, right? <laughs> but uh, OK. So I prefer to say, uses English language query than natural language. So uh, nice thing that interprets your question and serves you the correct answer in the form of a report chart graph, and these visualizations modify dynamically as you modify the question. Again, nice thing. You probably see, have seen a lot of demos about this. Maybe, does, does somebody remember English query as part of SQL Server 2000? Yes, you do. So we have kind of reincarnation of uh, this semantics uh, knowledge built in English query now in Power QA. And Power BI sites are also part of Office 365 only. So you have a way to publish your data and share it across the organization or even uh, broader without need to, to have a big internal infrastructure that su supports farms of SharePoints and so on. So, so far we have seen many advantages of Office 365. And now we are coming to the point where Excel 2013 has features that are not available in Office 365. And first of these features are the most important I want to talk about, data mining add-ins for Office. So with data mining add-ins for Office, you bring the power of mining inside Excel. However, this is not the same thing as Power Pivot. Excel doesn't become a data mining engine with these add-ins you need analysis services installed in multidimensional mode. Analysis services in multidimensional mode is OLAP server and data mining engine. And data mining Excel add-ins actually take Excel data, send it to analysis services, and then use DMX, data mining extension language, uh, extensions language to query this data and show the results in different visualizations inside Excel. So we have three add-ins, data mining client for Excel, which is more targeted for advanced end users and even developers, and table analysis tools for Excel, tools which hide the complexity of uh, the development of data mining models, use more business terminology, and are very simple to use, so much more end user or business user oriented. In addition, with these data mining add-ins, you also get data mining templates for Visio, so you can even represent data mining models, visualize them inside Visio, Visio uh, diagrams. So, first of all, I would like to explain why would you need data mining add-ins. And why would you need data mining at all? And I'm switching to the first demo. 
So, what I've got here is Excel serving as analysis services client. So I actually created a very simple cube, which has one measure group and one dimension, and it's based on a single view, we target mail view, in my Adventure Work ZW 2012 database. So the story behind this view is that it joins all kind of demographic data about internet customers with a single flag showing whether this customer has purchased bike in the past or not. And the story is that we want to find out which kind of customers are those who are buying bikes. So maybe we want to make some marketing campaign and uh, we want to uh, find those probable buyers. So let me show you the source query. So these are the results. So I have some demographic data like marital status, gender, and so on. And at the end, I have a simple flag whether this customer has purchased bike in the past or not. So I'm using the cube to quickly analyze, to quickly analyze and find patterns which customers are buying bikes. So here I have uh, just simple measures like bike buyer, yes, no, and also a uh, number of cases. And I also calculated the percentage of buyers. This browser is just for controlling whether this works. I'm not really going to use it. But this is how you can browse this, uh, this cube insight management studio. Not really, not really important. Let's go back to Excel. So Excel as all up client allows me to check this over multiple columns very quickly. So for example, I don't see any good pattern in region, so I will just drop the region and put, for example, gender in columns. Or maybe gender would work better as a second level of uh, drilling down in rows, and maybe marital status could get in the columns. Now what I'm searching for is differences. This is percentage of bike buyers. So if I have some difference, then I found some pattern. And with OAP, I can do online analytical processing, meaning I can do uh, hundreds of reports in a very short time. So this looks perfect. Great. Now, I used also Power Pivot to create the same model. So I'm basing this Power Pivot model on the same data. I just imported this target mail view data in Power Pivot, created these three measures. Bike, let me expand this column so you will be able to see them. Bike buyer total, bike buyer count, and bike buyer percentage. So now I can analyze this data even without analysis services. So this is the same analysis, just this time directly from Excel without even having a connection to analysis services. And again, I can do hundreds of analysis. So this is online analytical processing. Looks great, right? But I have a problem. You see, no matter how good tool I've got, I'm limited because I'm a person, I'm a human. So, I, you know, even with just, I have like 10 or 12 input variables and one target, just with this number, I get millions of combinations. Do I put gender on the second level or in columns? Or should I put, uh, make breakdown over gender first and then region or then number of cars? So how do I find the best patterns? And you know, I'm doing this analysis online. I maybe even notice a valuable pattern, but then I do research further and further and further. Don't find anything valuable anymore. I want to go back, but sorry, I forgot what was the one that gave me the best patterns. So it's kind of endless loop because we are limited. Now imagine that there would be a tool that could do all of these breakdowns for you automatically and automatically select the one that gives the best results, 
the best variability in this target variable. This is what we are searching for. The best distribution between buyers and non-buyers. And here is where data mining gets into the game. Now, I will show you data mining client. And data mining client is working on Excel data, not on Power Pivot data. So this is the same data, data set as I have shown you in SQL Server, in Analysis Services Multidimensional, through Excel as a client and through browser, in Power Pivot. Just this time, this is directly in Excel worksheet. And I'm going to analyze this with data mining client tools. So here, you see, I need to maintain constant connection to analysis services. So I'm connected to a database. In connection string, you must have at least one database. So when you install data mining add-ins, um, the wizard asks you whether you want also to create this empty database called DM Admins DB, but it can be any database. If you already have some database in analysis services, you don't need to, to create it. And you see, this is my DM Admins DB, and here I don't have anything yet. It's completely empty database. I need it just to connect to this database. So now I'm going to analyze this data with data mining. So I'm trying to do some classification of my customer's data based on my target variable. And this classification is using behind the scenes decision tree, decision trees data mining algorithm available in analysis services multidimensional. With data mining add-ins, I can, with this data mining client part, I can analyze either a uh, sale range that is formatted as a table or sale range directly. Doesn't even need to be formatted as a table. Uh, it's even easier if it's formatted as a table because you get kind of strong data typing. And here is this classify wizard. So what I'm going to analyze, probably not first name, right? I'm going to analyze my bike buyer. I don't need first name and last name in analysis, but uh, all other columns will be used as input columns. And here I have possibility to influence on parameters of decision trees model, and I'm not going into details because we have only 60 minutes, but this is the part which, which is more or less equivalent to developing data mining models in Visual Studio or in BI Development Studio or SQL Server Data Tools, whatever it is called these days, right? So uh, you have full set of possibilities, and you can even create training and test set to evaluate these models. I will not even go there. Now let me call this structure just TM as target mail and model target mail decision trees. And I will immediately browse model. And I have also the last checkbox at the bottom is use temporary model. If I don't check this checkbox, I'm creating a permanent mining structure and mining model in analysis services, which simply means that this is not something you would enable for end users. This is more for developers. Instead of using Visual Studio, you can use Excel. Of course, you need elevated permissions to create things in analysis services, okay? So let me just click Finish. And what is this wizard doing is reading spreadsheet data. So this was done. So data is already sent to analysis services. Training was the part where analysis services worked. And these are already the results. So based on my input data, I'm interested in those who purchased the bike. And here is my decision tree. And I can easily spot more interesting branches. Those who are darker, those have more bike buyers. So for example, if I go here, I can see that if number of cars not equal zero and not one, so it can be two, three, four, or I think five is maximum, and the region is specific, and total children not equal five, in this group, 
I already have 63% of buyers and less than 37% of non-buyers. Or, for example, if I browse this, bro this group with number of cars equal one and commute distance between zero and one miles, uh, I have like 72% and 72 and half percent of bike buyers. And you see, my data mining algorithm did everything for me. Tried all of the possible breakdowns or drill downs and selected and kept only those who gave the most gain in information, meaning the most different behavior in the group. Uh, so we have uh, the most different behavior between groups. So we have like in one group like 72% buyers and in the other only 13% of buyers. So this was very, very good split. So I found these very important patterns in a much easier way. Now this is using data mining viewers that are shipped with SQL Server. And these viewers exist in both Windows and web versions, so you can also freely include them in your application. And they also exist in Management Studio and Visual Studio. Let me refresh these mining structures, and you can see that I actually created a permanent structure on analysis services with a mining model. And I can also browse model here, and I get completely the same viewer. So, sorry, from Excel, I can only copy this as a, as a picture. Right, copy to Excel to a new worksheet, but this is not interactive anymore inside, inside Excel. This is just a picture. Okay, so I guess now you get the basic idea why you need data mining and why is this data mining the most advanced part of the business intelligence suite. And just because of data mining, I still prefer to use Excel 2013. But there are also some other add-ins that are still not available in the cloud version. And hopefully, at some point, we will have a match in features between both versions. So there will be no trade-off in this add-ins part. Uh, so you would be able to decide only based on the price. Besides that, we have in this data mining client also important tools that help you with data preparation, similarly like preparing a data warehouse also for preparing data for data mining takes you like 70 or 80 percent of time uh, of the data mining project. So we have some tools also that helps you in this preparing, but don't forget we are inside Excel, so we have all of the Excel functions there. We can explore data quickly, we can remove outliers, relabel discrete values, or even create statistically random samples, which is very important. You see, I mentioned that performance of Excel suffers with huge data sets. That's why we need Power Pivot for all up analysis. But this is not a problem for data mining. Data mining is based on statistics, and in statistics we are working with samples. We do not analyze big data with statistics. We analyze samples, and the important thing is to do sampling correctly, okay? to really represent your population, and it is random. So how many cases do you need? Basically 20, 30,000, never more than 100,000. So you can pretty easily analyze this inside Excel. So what we have, we have decision trees, we have regression trees, we have clustering, we have association rules, so we can easily get market basket analysis in Excel. We have forecast tool for advanced forecasting. And as you saw, we could also create mining structure and mining models in analysis services. So I actually used Excel as a development tool. In addition, decision trees is a predictive model, so I can use it to predict uh, on some new data set which customer or potential customer will buy bike or not. And when you do predictions, you typically create multiple mining models, and then you evaluate them. 
So you validate which gives you the best prediction. If you remember when I did demo on the second or third screen of the wizard, was also a question, how much data do I want to leave for the test set? Evaluating predictive models is very simple. You just split your data set in training and test set, and over the time, the best split is 70% for training and 30% for testing. And analysis services is learning patterns, doing the training of the mining model on the training set only. But then, of course, you should create multiple mining models. And then you use test set for predictions. So you use all of these mining models to try to predict outcome. In my case, the target variable was bike buyer. However, because this is old data, known data, the outcome is also known. So I can easily measure how many times each model gave me good, correct predictions, how many errors, and I can show this in different visualizations, which are all part of Excel, and all are kind of standard visualizations for data mining. I can also use data mining client as real client only, and just browse a mining model with these data mining viewers, mining model that exists in analysis services. I can even query these models with the query tool, so I can send DMX queries directly to analysis services. And there is one feature that doesn't even exist in Visual Studio, document the model. This is very useful for developers. And this is something that, as I said, doesn't even exist neither in Visual Studio nor in uh, Management Studio. Managing models means processing them, dropping them, and so on, and you can even Okay, connections, just to, to, to establish the connection to analysis services. And you can even set up profiler trace to catch the DMX queries that Excel is sending to analysis services. Now, as soon as you mark a sale range as a table, you get the second set of tools, so-called table analysis tools for Excel. So we have the same logic behind. Excel is sending data to analysis services. Analysis services is processing this data. Excel is then sending DMX queries to present this data. Just that everything is made simpler, more, let's say, business user intuitive, and, uh, of course, without all of the possibilities to change the parameters and so on, we had in, in the data mining client section. In addition, table analysis tools create temporary mining models only. So for this, you don't need any specific permission in analysis services. Actually, uh, in analysis services, it's not called temporary, it's called session mining models. But the logic is similar, like using TempTB in SQL Server, you don't need any specific permission for this. You just need to get a connection to SQL Server, and you can start using it. Now, uh, in analysis services, you just need to enable session mining models just to change one property of analysis services multidimensional, and you can start using these temporary mining models. And what you got is, uh, you see, analyze key influencers tool. This is the same thing as classify, just that it uses NeoBS algorithm for predictions. And you can already see that this is more like business-oriented terminology. And as I said, it is simpler to use. In addition, it doesn't use data mining viewers. It uses uh, these table analysis tools use um, Excel visualizations, so Excel options like data bars and everything that is inside Excel to generate the visualizations. We have detect categories which is basically the same thing as clustering. We have fill from example, which is using logistic regression to give you smarter autofill. You know that Excel is very good with autofilling next values, but with logistic regression, you get even, even more intelligence in it. Nice thing, nice tool is highlight exceptions. Very, very good tool for searching, for example, for outliers in combination of values. Searching for outliers in a single column is simple. However, combination of values in different columns might be suspicious. And the same tool is used also for 
uh, fraud detection, for example, you are searching for fraudulent transactions. Now, how does it work? It uses clustering model again, and clustering means you are grouping your data, your rows, your cases, in groups called clusters. And every row belongs to every cluster with some probability. Clustering creates virtual members or virtual rows called centroids, centers of clusters. And then the, uh, this um, expectation maximization clustering tries to cover all of the data points around the center with the Gaussian bell curve. So every case belongs to every cluster with some probability. If it's close to the centroid of some cluster, belongs to this cluster with probability, let's say, 0.8. And belongs to the other cluster with probability 0.03, and so on. Now imagine that there is a case in between of two clusters. So this case belongs to one cluster with probability 0.05 to the other 0.03, and to the others that are even more far away with 0.00, whatever. So basically, it means this case doesn't fit well anywhere in any of the clusters. So it's somehow different, different from other cases. So we have, uh, we have an exception. Maybe it is a fraudulent transaction. Maybe this is simply an error in data. Shopping basket is, again, using association rules, just, again, sim in a simpler way with more business-oriented oriented, uh, terminology. And we got forecast tool using time series model, and we have prediction calculator, uh, which is actually creating inside a worksheet an online calculator you can use uh, to, to, to interactively try to predict new values with many inputs, and behind this is, again, logistic regression mining model. Excel by itself has goal-seek and what-if analysis tools, but with data mining add-ins, you get goal-seek and what-if on steroids, with much more intelligence behind, much more knowledge. Again, logistic regression is used in the back. So let me show you just a couple of quick analyses with this table analysis tool. So I have this data, and I go to here to table tools, analyze, and let me analyze key influencers for the bike buyer column, and choose the columns. I don't need first name and last name, right? And run. So I'm doing the same thing as with decision trees. Try to find out what has an influence on decision whether to buy a bike or not. And you see, I got reports which are using just Excel built-in features, no data mining viewers. Maybe this one is even better to show immediately what favors buying a bike and what favors not buying a bike. So number of cars owned zero favors buying a bike. Partially high, partial high school favors not buying a bike. Short commute distance favors buying a bike, and so on. Let me go back to this table, and let me show you another analysis, highlight exceptions. And this time, it was, the wizard was kind of smarter, already selected all of, the, uh, all of the columns I wanted to use for this analysis. So this is just searching for clusters and finding cases that do not fit well in any of the cluster. This is overall statistics. So number of children at home made the most problems, but the best thing is here in the original table. These rows are highlighted, you see? Highlight exceptions, highlights exceptions. So this row has suspicious combination of data, and in this case, probably the most suspicious value is the education column, which kind of doesn't fit together with other columns. It doesn't mean that there is something wrong, but now you have your source data highlighted so you can easily go and overview it and find these errors or outliers. Or if you are analyzing transactions, you might even find fraudulent transactions. So you see, this was pretty, pretty powerful. Now, what else do we got? Yes, Power Query. Uh, I you know that with SQL 2012, Microsoft also introduced a new group of 
products in the suite called Enterprise Information Management Tools. And we have integration services, data quality services, and master data services in this group. So we have counterpart in Excel. And Power Query is kind of counterpart of integration services. So this is Excel Enterprise Information Management. And again, you see a lot of Power Query, very nice tool. With Power Query, you don't need to choose between 2013 or 365. This time, Power Query was really final version. RTM version was really cloud first. But from May 5th, from Monday, uh, you can also download the RTM version for Excel 2013. So now, here with Power Query, uh, the features are matched again. Of course, new version will come to cloud first, but at least here, there is no trade-off if you use on-prem or cloud version. Anyway, as I said, you saw a lot of Power Query demos. You know that it is very powerful, great tool, similarly to, to Power View. Great tool that really enables a lot of power with, without need to go in-depth with knowledge, and you can really merge data from multiple sources. Now, yes, this is great thing, merging data or meshing up data. You can use Power Query. You can use, uh, 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 of course, uh, this uh, uh, foreign keys in Power Pivot model. However, all of this works perfectly if you have a common identification. What if you don't have a common identification? Well, then, sorry, then it's not easy to do these things in Power Query or even Power Pivot. Then you must do matching based on some similarities, similarities of names, addresses, some string similarities. And this is a very complex problem that goes beyond capabilities of Power Query and Power Pivot. So what can you do? Well, how many of you have already played with data quality services? A couple of you. So data quality services has built-in algorithm for matching. And it is accessible from Excel. But not directly. There is no data quality services add-in. You must use also master data services, and you can download MDS add-in for Excel. And in this MDS add-in, you can through master data services access data quality services knowledge base and perform a matching in Excel. So unfortunately, you need all of this. Data quality services, master data services, and they must be installed on the same instance, SQL Server instance, and Excel MDS add-in. Then Excel sends requests for matching to MDS, and the MDS is then sending requests to DQS. Okay? But you get matching in Excel. And uh, if you have MDS, this works pretty, pretty good. Pretty good inside Excel. So let me show you this. I'm having already master data services with some customer master data, so I'm just connecting to my master data services. And I will quickly import a couple of rows. So I will just filter my customers, and just what I need is, uh, OK, name, street address, maybe email address, and just a couple of rows. So. I will import only those where the code is lower or equal. Let's say I think it's 11, 0, 12. I would get only three rows. And here, these are the, this is data from master data services. OK? Now, what I've got here is a possibility to update this data in batches through Excel. So I can update this data, insert new data, and then send the whole batch of these changes to master data services, which is much better than using MDS or master data manager, the default client. So let me add a row. I'm adding this Jacqueline. You see that it's immediately highlighted. This is new row. I will just make some errors. And I don't have a common ID, so let's say that this is 
minus 11, whatever. And let's say that I have also street address. And I will also make some differences here, like abbreviate curve to ST, and email, whatever, can be even correct, doesn't matter. So you see, I'm inserting batches of data. Now I want to check, before sending this to MMDS, I want to check whether they have duplicates. So I must have matching DQS knowledge base, and then I can do this. And uh, this looks very, very smart. Immediately, uh, this MDS Edin knew how to uh, match uh, um, Excel data with uh, my DQS knowledge base, but it's not so smart. On my DQS instance, I have only one matching knowledge base with the same names, so it's not a really big deal. Uh, anyway, now I can run this. And DQS is finding potential matches. I got only four rows, right? But it took some time. So DQS, I can even show details. DQS says that these two rows are potentially representing the same customer with 83% probability. Now, matching is great. Matching is great. Uh, but as I said, this is a complex problem. And one of the complexity is that potentially every row can match any other row. So imagine that you have two tables. Every row from the left can match any row from the right. So basically, you have full cross-join. And full cross-join means quadratic algorithm useless in production for huge amounts of data. Works perfectly well on a couple of rows, couple of 10, 100 even, but don't even try to use them on like 10,000 rows. And the problem of DQS matching is that it uses complete cross-join, fully quadratic algorithm. We need for matching thousands of rows, like, let me now delete this worksheet, Thousand of rows, like I've got here. I have nearly, I think, 2,000 rows. Yes, I have nearly 2,000 rows with clean data. And I have the same rows with data that I made some changes. So, for example, I have John Young, and here I have MGN Young. Uh, this one is again changed, right? Uh, so this one was, uh, this is how many times I updated it. So zero means that this is the same as source data. But this one is also changed a lot. So you can see I have more or less complex changes. And now I have to find matches based on string similarity on huge amounts of data. And I already know that I cannot help myself with power query, with power pivot, and not even with DQS matching. I mean, if I would run DQS matching on this amount of data, it would already take hours, if not days. But if I would run with full 18,000 customers, it already means I would have temporary results set of 300 and more millions rows. So even in this uh, pretty fast notebook, it could already take like three days or even more. With million rows, it could take one year. Okay, so we can start and come back next year to the same conference and see, see the results. But fortunately, there is a, inside Microsoft Suite, there is a tool that can do fa smart pre-selecting and do much better job in matching huge amounts of data than DQS. And this is Fuzzy Lookup. Fuzzy Lookup inside, exists inside integration services from version 2005. Now, this is not very well known, but this is also a free add-in for Excel, free add-in for 2013 only. Again, something that is on-prem only at the moment. It has only one button, fuzzy lookup. And again, the wizard part is smart. It already realized I have only two tables in my uh, worksheet, workbook. So uh, already decided that uh, uh, these are the tables that should be matched. But the only match I need is based on full name and street address, similarly like with data quality services. And I have a lot of configuration options. However, I will just click Go. 
And remember, with data quality services, this could take a lot of time. And even with uh, fuzzy lookup can take a lot of time if it comes into an endless loop. Let's hope that it will start giving results immediately. Other, uh, yeah, yeah, it's already there. Otherwise, I would just stop Excel and restart it. And you can see the results here. I mean, although I have matched 2000, nearly 2,000 rows with 2,000 rows, it was done in a couple of seconds. And in addition, this matching algorithm is also much better than the one in DQS. Fuzzy lookup is very, very hard to confuse. You know, when you do this matching, you can also match incorrect, incorrect rows. So that's why I have original ID just with uh, multiplied with minus one in this uh, um, uh, dirty data. So I can simply calculate how many times each algorithm made an error. And I will not even go through details, but I can assure you that there is no more than a single error with this fuzzy lookup. There are some thresholds. So this one didn't find match, probably the changes were too big. So if I lower the threshold, then I would get more matches, but also more errors. But in addition, I would uh, kind of turn off this smart pre-selection. So I would also go more and more towards uh, the full cross join. Anyway, even with these default settings, threshold for matching 0 0.5, something like this, you saw that I got extremely, extremely good results. 90% or more matches without, practically without errors. You will hardly be able to notice any ID that is different from left and right, which would simply mean error. See? And again, this is a tool that gives you a big advantage to on-prem version of Excel. Now, finally, this is what we already, already saw through demos, right? Excel fuzzy lookup. Finally, the final part of this presentation is, can you combine Power Pivot with data mining? So can you, for example, mine Power Pivot data? Unfortunately, not directly. Remember that we are mining data in worksheets, either organized as sale ranges or as tables. So we must get this data from Power Pivot to Excel worksheet. And you can get this uh, by creating a flattened pivot table report, remove all subtotals, grand totals, and convert pivot table to formulas. So you get direct access to data. And then format the data area as a table and use table analysis tool. Pretty simple and straightforward process. What about the opposite? Can you use data mining model inside Power Pivot. Yes. However, this must be a permanent model stored in analysis services. This cannot be a model that was created as session mining model because it simply disappears after you stop using it. And how would you use this data mining model? Well, you use it as an additional dimension in your Power Pivot model. So uh, this way, you get, a, let's say, opportunity to browse mining model with pivot tables and pivot charts and get additional OLAP capabilities beyond basic columns. And finally, it is also very useful uh, to, to, to use, uh, to combine data mining with OLAP because you want to measure the, if, uh, the, the efficiency of mining models over time. You see, for example, doing fraud detection, you are searching for some fraudulent patterns. And, sorry, and this went, went a bit, yeah, too far. So you, you, you want to measure the efficiency of the model over time because patterns change and you must refine the model over time. So you must measure how many times the predictions were correct. You know, this transaction was predicted as fraudulent. Somebody checked it and marked it. Yes, this was really fraudulent. So you can now measure how many times these predictions were correct. And when the correctness drops, it's time to refine your mining model. 
Mining is, data mining is a never finished project. It's not like a product. You are not building a product. You are building a learning infrastructure. And in order to be able to learn, you need to measure. So how do you do this? Well, for Power Pivot, you define analysis services multidimensional as the data source. And then this gives you MDX query editor. However, you simply copy and paste DMX query to MDX query editor and it works. Import the data and create relationships. So let me show you this in my last, last demo. Let me go back to this customers uh, with Power Pivot and data mining. Remember that I have Power Pivot model with a single table. So I will just import additional data from analysis services multidimensional, okay? And I have a database called data mining models there. And here is where this wizard is asking me for MDX statement. But, but, but I will use DMX statement which I already prepared. So this is the DMX statement. I have a clustering model here with uh, five clusters. So with this DMX model, I will just get the customer key and the cluster to which it belongs. So let me quickly show you. I have multiple models, but I decide to use this one. So I have five clusters and I can try to find what's inside each cluster. Doesn't really matter, but for example, Single people are more in these two clusters, less in those three, and so on. Anyway, I want to import this data in my Power Pivot. So I will simply copy this DMX query. To this MDX statement, call this target mail clustering as dimension, and Finish. So I got new dimension, new table, and all I need to do is to connect it with my existing target mail through customer key. Save it, right? And start analyzing it. So I will just go back to the data view and insert a new pivot table in a new worksheet. And now I have my target mail with columns, let me enlarge this again, with columns like bike buyer percentage, which now can be analyzed also over my clusters together with any, any other column, together with charting. So I efficiently connected my data mining model with Power Pivot. And as I said, now I get more power in all up analysis and in addition, I can measure efficiency of my mining models. Okay, so that's more or less everything I wanted to say. We have still one minute and a half. Any questions? Well, we have time for, let's say, one question, but of course, I'll be around also tomorrow. Any questions? Yes, please. What additional resources would I recommend if you want to learn more about data mining tools? Well, first of all, I wrote data mining course, so this would be the first one. Uh, and uh, there is a great book uh, written by SQL Server Data Mining Tool. Data mining in SQL Server 2008, it hasn't been changed since then. Uh, just this data mining cadence have changed. And of course, there are a lot of theoretical books if you want to learn about uh, algorithms. Okay, yes, please. Yes, because Microsoft's uh, updating this. Actually, yes, the same data mining is now used in HD Insight. So it's expanding to big data, but not directly here.
Okay, so I see that it's time. So thank you very much for coming and enjoy the last day.